On November 30th, 1999, three East African countries' heads of state, Kenya's Daniel Arap Moy, Tanzania's Benjamin William Mkapa, and Yoweri Kaguta Museveni of Uganda met in Arusha, Tanzania to sign a crucial treaty. The Treaty for the Establishment of the East African Community that also changed East Africa. It was on the 7th of July 2000 that East Africa's long-held dream finally became a reality after the treaty was entered into force, ushering in a new era for the United Republic of Tanzania, Uganda and Kenya. Africa ya mashariki, oye. Oye. Ya Africa mashariki, ju, 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 Africa nzima, wa Africa tukai tu, kama tuna continent, sawa sawa. Africa iweze kuendelea bila kuwa moja. The move was a major milestone for the community, having revived the founding father's dream of the former East African community, which hitherto had collapsed in 1977. To celebrate this achievement, the community was relaunched at a colorful ceremony at the Sheikh Amri Abade Stadium in Arusha, and East Africa became one. In a bid to avoid the pitfalls of the first community, a legislative organ vested with legislative oversight and representative powers was inaugurated on the 29th of November 2001 by the third summit of the EAC Heads of State in Arusha. Established under Article 9 of the Treaty for the Establishment of the East African Community, the East African Legislative Assembly, better known as IALA, with its seat in Tanzania's diplomatic hub, the city of Arusha, has risen from humble beginnings in November 2001 to become a robust legislative organ of the East African Community. Mr. Speaker! At its first sitting in Arusha on November 29, 2001, Iela unanimously elected its first speaker, the Right Honorable Abdurrahman Kinana, who was to steer the assembly until its dissolution following the end of its five-year term in 2006. Then the assembly was comprised of 27 elected members, nine each from Kenya, Uganda and the United Republic of Tanzania, the original partner states that constituted the EAC. The first assembly under the Right Honorable Kinana also witnessed the signing of the EAC Customs Union on the 2nd of March 2004 that was effected on the 1st of January 2005. The first challenge I think which was most important was to put up in place an assembly which was not in existence, number one. Number two is that we had an assembly which had no front bench and back bench. The front bench was the ministers, the three governments, and the back bench were all the, all the parliamentarians, regardless of political parties they represented uh, in all the countries. Uh, third and most important, I think, was to establish the unity and uh, collective purpose uh, between the members uh, from the three partner states, in that case, the Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania. Honorable members, Mr. Speaker. Ten years down the line, the Assembly has become a key avenue and a path in meeting the aspirations of the East African people on the kind of unity they desire. Many are elated at the gains made so far by the Assembly, but no one beats the current Speaker of the Second Assembly, the Right Honorable Abdirahim Abdi, who says 10 years is a reminder and paints a perfect picture of the reasons why East Africans should stay together. As an assembly, we are celebrating 10 years this, uh, this year. Uh, we are the legislative arm of the, of, the, of the community. We represent the people of East Africa. And we also carry out the oversight functions for the people of, of East Africa in terms of uh, the projects and programs of the community. Ten years is not a, is a short time in, you know, in any lifetime and to build an institution you know, when you have parliaments who are hundreds of years uh, old. So it's a very short life and uh, I think we have uh, tried as much as possible to, to do what the East Africans have told us to do. 
The second assembly was sworn in on the 5th of June 2007 and is made up of a total of 52 members, 45 of whom are elected, 9 from each of the 5 partner states and 7 ex officio members. The ex officio members comprise of the 5 ministers in charge of the East African Community Affairs in the partner states, the EAC Secretary General and the Council to the Community. Both the first and the second assemblies have lived true to their mandate of making Iala a custodian of regional law, thus safeguarding the interests of more than 130 million people spread across the EAC partner states. Iala has passed over 30 crucial laws for the community and moved and adopted a number of reports, motions and resolutions, all key towards strengthening the integration dispensation. Over the last 10 years, the people of East Africa have made significant strides in the integration process of the region. And the different organs of the East African community, including IALA, have made very important contributions to this process. I take this opportunity to commend this assembly for the oversight role that it has continued to play and for the legislative uh, achievements this August Assembly has made. I cannot forget to remind you of the need for the East African Federation first track. By 2012, we need to agree on the way forward. Indeed, it was a decade of great progress as we successfully navigated our way from cooperation to integration. We are committed to work and the says the opportunities of integration into the East African community in general and in the implementation of the Common Market Protocol in particular. By 2007, the second Iala had already made big strides, as was the community which had two new partner states in its fold. The republics of Rwanda and Burundi joined the EAC family, something that increased the Assembly's membership to 52 a year later, when the new members of the Assembly from the two countries took their oath in May 2008. Rwanda being admitted as a member, uh, it is a positive achievement. Indeed, 10 years are little in terms of lifespan, but what makes the difference is the, the achievements and the impact on daily life. We are convinced on our part that the East African Legislative Assembly has delivered. In my view, it has been uh, existence of necessity for the past uh, 10 years, uh, but significantly that it has added value uh, to governance issues in the region. The 10 years of this anniversary of East African Legislative Assembly, to us and to the people of Tanzania, it is like a, a commemoration of uh, the past East African community. There are a lot of uh, legacies which we had in the last East African community. So by coming this one, it's like uh, reminding ourselves the need of being together, the need of working together, because if you work in a small area, you cannot achieve much. One, I think we must celebrate the continuity. Uh, at least uh, for the last 10 years, we have not faltered. There are areas, in fact, which have been strengthened areas like the uh, security. I think our defense chiefs are more in touch than any, any other body. The ELA itself uh, is alive. We have had uh, uh, two sessions, and I think things are moving well. It's growing steadily. So I think that uh, the fact that we've been able to survive is in itself a cause for celebration. For Burundi, I would say that coming to East Africa in the Rwanda as well, it is homecoming. Twelfth ELA asserts its authority as a regional assembly and execute its daily mandate, 
the Assembly's seven standing committees, whose members serve for two and a half years, remain instrumental in examining, discussing and making recommendations on all bills laid before the Assembly, hence contributing to the passage of crucial laws. Whatever laws uh, that we pass here in the community supersede national law in matters pertaining to the community. And uh, one of the major, I could say, bills that, uh, or acts that we have passed here is the Customs Management Act, which brought into force the Customs Union Protocol. And uh, I think from 2005, that was uh, the, the law that governed customs in the, whole, uh, in the whole region. And as you're aware, uh, for people to benefit in the community, they must see benefits. And uh, I, I can truly say that uh, trade between or within the East African community has increased tremendously. The seven standing committees established under Rule 78 of the Assembly's Rules of Procedure deal with matters of trade and investment, agriculture, tourism and natural resources, regional affairs and conflict resolution, accounts, general purpose and legal rules and privileges. The House Business Committee on its part manages the affairs of the Assembly and organizes the business and program of the House and any other functions incidental to its furtherance. The committees are coming with a number of activities. We have to do the legal part, we have to do the oversight, we have to do representation. And in doing this, as the countries, because we are many now, we are five countries, we need to go to all these countries, we need to meet various people, we need to make people aware about the uh, East African community and about Yala, what is Yala doing. The going has not been very easy, uh, but so far we can uh, stand proud as an assembly. Uh, in terms of legislation, we have uh, passed quite fundamental pieces of legislation, one of them being the, uh, the East African Tourism and Wildlife Management Bill. The bill we passed last time, the bill on the East African uh, Commission Bill, Service Commission Bill. That one will be very important for the community. And now we are uh, working on a very important bill, very crucial bill, on the East African Legislative Assembly and members' election. And that one, I think that will be possible to table it at the next session. We put questions to the Council of Ministers in the House and give them time limit and time frame for them to give us answers and to see the things which are not implemented, when they will be implemented. In addition to the fundamental task of legislation, the Assembly is at the forefront in oversight activities. There are several vivid oversight roles of the Assembly undertaken by the committees. A typical example is best cited by findings of the Accounts Committee which as recently as August this year carried out an oversight assessment of EAC organs and institutions and recommended for the establishment of an audit risk committee to ensure better audit within the key EAC organs. As the chairperson of the public accounts, I think it is high time we created other institutions like the East African Community Inspector Generals of the community to be able to take on people who are abusing their offices because it is there. Human beings at the regional level are not exceptional to national human beings. But also we are lucky that one of our colleagues brought a bill in the House which addresses the recruitment. If that bill is passed, then these political appointments would reduce. <laughs> 